Brian Derry. Hello, I'm Dr. Ahmed Olson Hurry from uh, LOI Care. We will be talking today about uh, macular degeneration. Uh, we are now live, so we will be answering your questions about anything you have to, to uh, think or thoughts about macular degeneration. Um, I have been here now at LOI Care for about six years. I'm a retina surgeon and specialist here, and we are excited to take your uh, questions. So macular degeneration is a disease that happens as you age. That's why it's called age-related macular degeneration. Um, older people get it. Usually they're in their 70s and 80s. Um, it happens from a breakdown of the blood vessels underneath the retina, which is the film that lines the back wall of the eye. Um, there's actually two different types. There's a dry and there's a wet type. The dry type is slowly progressive, and you can lose vision from it. Um, and if the, the usual vision that you lose is your central vision. So people come in and they say, I see a blind spot. I can't see in the center. Um, it's usually not something that you, people come in and say, I can't see on the side. So that's one of the distinctions of Mac generation is that you lose your central vision from it. Um, the dry top, again, is slowly progressive. The wet type is the one that comes on pretty quickly. Um, people wake up and they say, I can't, I can't see in the center part. And we usually treat that with injections in the eye. What's the difference between wet and dry AMD? Uh, again, the dry type is slowly progressive, and you can slow it down by taking eye vitamins. And the eye vitamins help slow it down by about 25%. Um, also, we recommend people eat green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale when they have dry macular degeneration. Um, that's, that's good for the retina, and um, uh, we also sometimes recommend fish, either baked or grilled, not fried, for um, macular degeneration. We think the, the fish oils may uh, have a role in uh, slowing down the progression of it. The wet component is where you have bleeding or subretinal fluid underneath the retina or inside the retina. That's why we call it wet, because there's actually fluid inside the retina or the back wall of the eye. In order to get that fluid to dry, to dry up, uh, we inject in, uh, things inside the eye, medicine inside the eye, to, to help decrease the swelling in the retina. So we have a question that came in, and it's, are you more likely to get AMD if your parents had it? Yes, it does run in families. So uh, if your parents had it, you're more likely to have it. And we do recommend um, annual eye exams to check for precursors of macular degeneration, which are called drusen, uh, which can lead to macular degeneration in the future. So if your parents had it, it is important to get checked for it. Just, is it a curable, like, can it be cured? Or? It's not curable is the problem. So unfortunately, uh, there's no cure for macular degeneration. There's a lot of research into it, uh, but at this point, there's no cure for it. Uh, the research right now is trying to figure out if we can find medicines that last longer. A lot of the medicines we use right now to treat wet maturation, for example, only last about one to two months. Uh, so right now, most of the research is trying to find medicines which you can inject or uh, even pills that will uh, have a longer duration of action. So you talked about getting injections. What, are, what do those exactly feel like in your eye? It's a little weird. You know, when people get, you talk about getting shots in the eyes, either they, some of them pass out. <laughs> Some of them cry. There's a lot of emotions that, that, that uh, get into it, but it's really not that bad. Uh, we numb up the eye really well. We uh, clean, it up, clean up the eye really well, and uh, most of the time people just feel a little pinch. The, the needle exactly that we use to inject something in the eye is um, one of those insulin needles. So uh, with the proper numbing, most people just feel a little pinch or barely anything at all. Um, how old, Jim wants to know, how old do you have to be to get AMD? There's no particular age, but it's, it is called age-related Mac generation. So it does happen as you age. So the, the older you are, the more likely you are to have it. Um, but again, just like we talked about before, if your parents have it, it is important to get checked sooner rather, rather than later for that. Um, and we do recommend a dilating eye exam, especially after the age of 40, if you have a family history of it. Um, Michael wants to know, what can I eat to help prevent MD, AMD? Well, that's what we, you know, we think that green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale especially, and you really want the green leafy vegetables. Um, lettuce is not as good. So we always recommend people, for example, when they go to Subway, instead of using lettuce, use spinach on, on, on your subs. Um, the greener there are, the leafier there are, the better it is for the retina. And the reason is there's zeaxanthin and lutein in these green leafy vegetables, uh, which are beneficial for the retina itself. You said it was age-related, but is it always caused by age? 
Well, the most common factor is, is age. Um, uh, there are some forms of Mac degeneration that happen in, in younger people, uh, but the most common factor is, is age, and that's why we call it age-related Mac degeneration. Um, people who are Caucasian, um, females, uh, they have a higher likelihood of having it. So uh, in this subgroup of, of patients, there is a higher likelihood that you may develop it. Who is at a greater risk of developing AMD? Again, the, the greatest risk are uh, females, Caucasians, people who have lighter colored eyes and lighter colored skin uh, are at the greatest risk of uh, developing it. We do recommend also patients um, wear sunglasses when they're outside at, at a uh, uh, at a young age because that will, the UV protection is important in order to help, in order to help prevent uh, the progression of MAC generation. Can AMD damage be reversed? Unfortunately it can't. So the goal is prevention um, and uh, slowing it down and that's what we recommend. That's why we recommend people taking eye vitamins for it. And, and it's important. People think that vitamins are just not a big deal but in terms of MAC generation it helps slow it down by 25%. So that is significant. The trial that showed that it was significant was called the AREX trial. So when you go and you try to buy eye vitamins, it's really important that you make sure that they're called AREDS vitamins, A-R-E-D-S vitamins. And that's the study that proved that it was important to, uh, to take these vitamins and that the, the, the decrease in the progression was 25%. Can you explain a little bit more about what uh, Drusen is? Drusen is, is usually, uh, Drusen are these little pockets that grow underneath the retina, which again, the retina is the back wall of the eye, and these uh, pockets are really precursors of macular degeneration. It doesn't mean that all the people who have macular, macular drusen will develop macular degeneration, uh, but in a um, subset of patients, um, uh, they will develop it. So when we see drusen in a patient, for example, when they're 40 or 50, and we see that someone has drusen, which are a precursor of macular degeneration, we tend to follow them more closely. Are there any lifestyle risks that are associated with AMD? I think it's trying to reconnect. Yeah, some of the lifestyle risks that we, that we recommend avoiding are number one, smoking um, is that detrimental to, your, uh, 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 to the macula. Uh, it may affect the blood flow going to the eye, and we think that it may cause uh, effect macular generation. Um, it's important that if people who are outside a lot, people who are uh, go to the beach a lot or um, are um, just outside in general, that they wear sunglasses to help protect the UV light and prevent it from entering the eyes um, and damaging the, the macula. Um, people who have other retinovascular diseases or ret other retinal diseases, like you can have a detached retina or you can have retinal vein occlusions, uh, those patients, uh, we also recommend that um, uh, you kind of protect your eyes with uh, sunglasses or uh, avoiding uh, smoke and eating a lot of green tea vegetables. People talk about floaters that they see or have in their eyes. What are, what are those? Should, should people be concerned about seeing those? Definitely. The floaters are really important. And it's important that if you have a sudden onset of floaters in your vision that you come in right away and see a retinal specialist. Uh, floaters are things that um, can sometimes lead to retinal tears or retinal attachments, and those are things that are that we can fix and we can prevent it if we pick it up early. Uh, when people come in late and there's a full detachment, it's usually a, a large surgery where we either have to put oil in the eye or put gas or put a scleral buckle or a band around the eye, which is a major surgery. But if you have floaters and you come in early, uh, if you notice some, uh, sometimes there's a small tear that we can fix quickly in five minutes in the clinic, and it's really not a big deal. What can somebody expect when they come in to see you as a retina specialist? Well, when you come in to see a retina specialist, the, the exam is a little bit more uh, targeted and specific than going to a general optometrist or, or ophthalmologist. When you see a retina specialist, your eyes will be dilated and you will have a full retinal exam with a, um, usually a, a bright light, which can be irritating sometimes, uh, in order to check for uh, both the macula to make sure there's no macular generation or any kind of uh, disease inside the macula, which is the center part of the retina, and that's where you get your crispest vision, and the peripheral retina. Uh, checking for uh, things called lattice or retinal tears, which can uh, lead to loss of can lead to loss of vision. So, the usual um, amount of time we recommend that patients um, come in is uh, the, the usual time that exam lasts about an hour and a half between start and finish, and that includes the diagnostic testing. So, can you tell us exactly what the retina does for the eye? 
um, when light enters the eye, it gets um, absorbed by the retina, which is the film that lines the back part of the eye. And that light gets transmitted through the optic nerve, which is a cable that connects the eye to the brain. And you actually see out of your brain, you don't see out of your eye. So the retina is the film that lines the back surface and the back wall of the eye, and that's what absorbs the light when it enters the eye. Um, could they go to the website if they want to know more? Or? Absolutely. We recommend everyone go to um, uh, LOICare.com. Um, if you have any questions at all, and we're always happy to ask any questions uh, that any of our patients have. Um, and we're also available anytime.